Hello all, welcome to Simplify Triple Studies. In this video, I will be discussing measurement of angular velocity or angular speed. Hope you have watched my previous video on measurement of linear velocity or linear speed. I have explained a few techniques which will be really help you to measure uh, the linear velocity in the previous session. And uh, before moving on to the session, if you are watching the channel first time and if the channel is more useful for you, I request you to subscribe and kindly share with your friends. And also whenever I am putting a new video, if you want to get the notification, kindly press the bell icon below. Moving on to the discussion, let's get some understand about how do you measure the angular velocity or angular speed, what are the various techniques which can be adopted. Before moving on to the session, you need to understand some basics of angular velocity or angular speed. So you can able to calculate the angle, if you know the linear speed, then definitely you can able to calculate angular speed. That means omega is equal to omega uh, 2 pi n by 60, 2 into n divided by 60. So this is actually called uh, angular speed or angular velocity you can call. Omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. Okay. So here, uh, the instrument used for measurement of angular velocity as of shaft either by registering the total number of revolutions during the period of contact or by indicating directly by the number of revolutions per minute. You need to take care of the point that is number of revolutions per minute need to be considered here. How? How you can able to measure angular velocity? Let me tell you, there are two popular methods available. First one is known as mechanical transducer or another method is electrical tachometer. You can use either mechanical transducers or electrical tachometer. In that there are subdivisions like uh, hard speed indicators, revolution counter and timer, tachoscope, centrifugal tachometers, vibrating field tachometers are comes under mechanical transducer. If I talk about electrical transducers, there are very easy methods such as DC tachometers, AC tachometers, photoelectric tachometers, eddy current tachometers, then capacitive tach tachometers and the stroboscopic tachometers. These are the different methods. Okay, now let's get to understand, especially electrical tachometer. First in the foremost, I would like to discuss what is a DC tachometer generator. It works based on the principle of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction and especially you know the dynamically induced EMO. Well, how about the formulation of dynamically induced EMO? So let, let, us take, let me take you the basic diagram of DC tachometer generator. As you can able to see in the diagram, we have two permanent magnets like uh, North Pole and South Pole, two pieces of magnet and uh, in between you can see an armature, it is a conductor. The armature is directly coupled with the shaft of a mechanical object. Okay, it is rotating uh, in the clockwise direction. You can able to see. As you as you can able to see, there is a commutator and a brush arrangement, like a DC generator. Then the output of brush that is directly connected to a voltmeter, and uh, there is a series resistor uh, to protect the voltmeter. It's a a moving coil voltmeter, MC voltmeter. So I will be putting like a DC. Uh, and uh, there is a current limiting resistor which is connected over there. Whenever the armature is rotating between two permanent magnets, we can apply Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. That is equal to E is equal to minus N into D5 by DT. Please refer the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction from by the previous video from the playlist of basic electrical engineering. I will be putting up the same thing in the group, in the I button also. So the flux is going to link with the armature and also the armature is continuously rotating. Therefore, induced EMF will be generated. Using the commutator, the variable uh, voltage that is going to convert into unidirectional voltage. And uh, the current is going to correct with the help of carbon brushes and you are, you are able to get the voltage. In conclusion, with respect to the speed, angular speed, okay, you can call omega, call omega, the angular speed, that is directly proportional to the EMF induced at this particular armature. So thereby, as the angular speed increases, the induced EMF also will be very much high. 
this is the way how dc tachometer generator works but there are lot of setbacks we need to uh, use the commutator commutator usage of commutator and trend brushes that is really burden okay and uh, to overcome that and more calibration is required to overcome that we, we can make use of ac tachometer generator ac tachometer generator is also works faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction it is similar to an induction motor here there won't be any commutator and brushes and also the components which are used are, used are number one stator rotor stator coil etc and here you can able to see the rotor part first this is your rotor look at this rotor part the rotor is coupled with the mechanical shaft it is rotating in clockwise direction and also there is a stator coil you can see the stator coil whenever the rotor starts operating definitely there is a what i can say emf which is going to be induced at the stator side okay the emf will be induced at the stator side just like an induction generator you can call it as just like induction generator not motor a generating mode it is operate based on the generating mode clear uh, the emf which is induced at the stator coil that will be purely ac just like an ac correct the ac voltage will be rectified by using the bridge rectifier you can see a bridge bridge rectifier this is a bridge rectifier but the output of a bridge rectifier will have certain amount of ripple conduct to minimize the ripple conduct there is a capacitor filter okay to filter out the ripple conduct and uh, the dc output will be obtained over this is a moving coil ammeter mc ammeter m sorry mc voltmeter not ammeter mc voltmeter that means uh, the speed the speed will be directly proportional to uh, the voltage which is generated over here across the capacitor it's a filtered one filtered capacitor ripple conduct will be eliminated so we can able to uh, avoid the usage of commutator trend brush here the smooth operation is guaranteed by using ac tachometer generator i hope you understood the difference between dc tachometer generator and the ac tachometer generator so another one i want to explain you another method is photoelectric tachometer so let's understand the construction and working of photoelectric tachometer so we have to consider an opaque disc opaque disc opaque means it never transmit the light that is called opaque disc in that opaque disc there are different number of holes so circular holes you can see the circular holes which passes the light okay at the these are the holes very clearly it is given uh, do understand that it passes the light but uh, the overall the disc will not pass the light but the, through the hole light is going to pass and also uh, there is a uh, rotor rotor is connected uh, to the shaft shaft of the moving body shaft of the moving object it is rotating in the clockwise direction and also there is a light source you need to have a light source so light source will be directly connected with the uh, opaque disc whenever shaft is rotating obviously the opaque disc is also started rotating then light will passes only through the holes can you see the holes here it is very clearly given please refer the diagram very clearly through the holes these are the different holes definitely light passes only through the holes and next to that you need to connect a light sensor you can use any kind of photo sensor i already explained the videos on photo sensors please refer that so through that the photo sensor identify the presence of light the output of photo sensor will be voltage there is a counter you can use the counter some amount of counter digital transducer can be used over there okay with respect to the movement uh, the counting starts clear so uh, the sp the speed the speed of the shaft the speed will be measured in terms of the light output light sensor output light sensor output will be of course an electrical quantity there is no doubt in that so uh, the speed will be measured in terms of electrical quantity so this is the way how photoelectric tachometer work it is a digital instrument but the light source is required so that is needed for this particular tachometer so this is about uh, the electrical tachometer so one more topic is remaining that is eddy current tachometer that i will be explaining in the next session in this video i have discussed about the electrical tachometers for the measurement of angular speed or angular velocity so i uh, i request you to share the video to the person those who are looking for this 